you can imagine the view from the Kremlin of all of this. You can imagine Putin in the Kremlin with his aides. When one of his aides comes into the office and says, Vladimir, you're never going to believe this. The President of the United States is pushing our crowd strike theory. I mean, you can almost imagine the incredulity of Vladimir Putin. You're kidding, right? You mean he really believes this? His own people don't believe this. Nobody believes this. And it's not, I mean, it would be bad enough, of course, that the President of the United States believes this Russian propaganda against the advice of all of his advisors, common sense and everything else. But it's worse than that. It's worse than that. On the basis of this Russian propaganda, he withheld 400 million in military aid to a nation Russia was fighting, our ally. One of those notes lays out the scheme very clearly and succinctly. Now, it's not every day that you get a document like this, what appears to be a member of the conspiracy writing down the object of the conspiracy. But that's exactly what we see here. The scheme that ultimately was directed by President Trump to coerce Ukraine to announce the investigation of the Bidens. I repeat, to announce the investigations, not investigate, not conduct. The only thing that mattered was the public announcement. The bottom line is this. What was in the best interests of our country was to help Ukraine, to give them the military aid, to fight one of our greatest adversaries, and to help promote the rule of law. And what was in President Trump's personal interest was the opposite, to pressure Ukraine to conduct investigations against his 2020 rival to help ensure his reelection. And what that, when what is best for the country and what was best for Donald Trump diverged, President Trump put himself above the best interests of our country. On the basis of this Russian propaganda, he withheld 400 million in military aid to a nation Russia was fighting, our ally. I mean, when we we ask about, okay, what's the national security implication of what the president did? How much more clear can it be that he's not only pushing Russian propaganda, that he's not only misleading Americans about who interfered in the last election, that he's not only doing the Kremlin a favor, but that he's withholding aid from a nation at war. The Russians not only got him to deflect blame from their interference in our democracy, but they got him to withhold military aid. Now, of course, there was this convergence of interest between the Kremlin and the president. The president wasn't pushing Kremlin talking points just to do Vladimir Putin a favor. He was doing it because it helped him. Because it helped him. Because it could get these talking points for him in his re-election campaign. And for that, he would sacrifice our ally and our own security. But nothing struck me more from Representative Garcia's presentation than that quote from Vladimir Putin from November of this past year, so just a couple months ago. Thank God, Putin said, thank God nobody is accusing us anymore of interfering in U.S. elections. Now they're accusing Ukraine. Thank God, Putin says. Well, you got to give Donald Trump credit for this. He has made a religious man out of Vladimir Putin. <laughs> but I don't, think, I don't think we really want Vladimir Putin, our adversary, to be thanking God for the President of the United States. Because they don't wish us well. They don't wish us well. They are a wounded animal. They are a declining power, but like any wounded animal, they are a dangerous animal. And there, there was that you know, rather glib line that, that was, you know, uh, he admitted was glib, but nonetheless made a point. 
the three or five ways to impeach oneself, and the third way was to hire Rudy Giuliani. Now, it struck me in watching that clip again that it's important to emphasize that Rudy Giuliani is not some Svengali here who has the president under his control. There may be an effort to say, okay, the human hand grenade Rudy Giuliani, it's all his fault. He had the president in his grip. And even though the U.S. intelligence agencies and the bipartisan Senate Intelligence Committee and everyone else told the president time after time, this is nonsense, the Russians interfered, not the Ukrainians, that, that he just couldn't shake himself of what he was hearing from Rudy Giuliani. You can say a lot of things about President Trump, but he is not led by the nose by Rudy Giuliani. And if he is willing to listen to his personal lawyer over his own intelligence agencies, his own advisors, then you can imagine what a danger that presents to this country.